off on the screen. Talk a little bit about that dynamics between you and Sam, and working with Sam. I think, I think it started in the auditioning room. Um, and I, and Jen did something very, very fascinating and, and, and beautiful. Uh, he made it seem like fun from the moment I, <laughs> I read the size without even knowing the script to the moment he flew Sam from Australia to LA and myself from New York to LA and, and Sam and I met. We knew we didn't have the job, but it just, yes, but it just felt so much fun still. It was just, and, and we, we got to meet him, we read the script, and and it wasn't like he sat down and, and, and allowed another camera guy to tape us as we read our lines. Like Jim had the camera on his shoulders and while he was directing us, and, and he, the basic direction was just do whatever you got to do, and I'm, I'm just going to follow you guys. To, to, to be actors and to, and to be told that, it's like, oh, you mean I can, I can actually play and I, and I, can, I can go anywhere and, and you'll make sure you capture it, it's, it is uh, the most liberating thing. So, um, and Sam and I uh, uh, did audition together, uh, we tested together, and, um, and then we booked it. So we had this very beautiful connection since the beginning of being these little underdogs. Um, he could have very easily given the role of Nate Thierry to uh, a series of amazing actresses that, that had uh, more of a notoriety than I did at the time. I mean, I'm just from Queens a little bit. And, uh, and Sam is, is this little Aussie hick from Australia who's so amazingly talented and elegant. And, and he saw us and he really believed in us and he fought for us. And, and um, and then he got us into his mind and into his world, and it's taken us, it's Sam and I, a long time to get out. I hope it'll be still longer yet. But uh, back, back to the floor for the next question. Hello, my name is Anthony, and first of all, I just want to say Sigourney, I love you. You're one of my favorite actresses. <laughs> yeah. My question is for James, Mr. Cameron. Um, you said it took two, four years for you to make this movie. I wanted to know what made you say now is the time to come out with it. I think it was it was kind of like knowing that the rain cloud is ready to rain, that the technology could be made to happen, but also just wanting to do something maybe, I don't want to say important because it sounds now like you're making a documentary or a convenient truth or something like that, but something that that uh, has the spoonful of sugar of all the action and the adventure and all that, which thrills me anyway as a fan, but also wanting to do something that, that has a conscience, that maybe in the, in the enjoying of it makes you think a little bit about the way you interact with nature and with your fellow man. Because I think it's going to be easy for people to look at Avatar and say, okay, this is a, this is a war, this is a battle between those, between those nasty industrial humans and those beautiful spiritually evolved Navi. But it's really not because we make science fiction as human beings for human consumption. So what does it really mean, you know? It means that the Navi represents something that is our higher selves or our aspirational selves, what we would like to think we are or maybe what we realize that we're losing. And that the humans in the film, even though there are some good ones uh, salted in, represent kind of what we know to be uh, that part of ourselves that is trashing our world and maybe condemning us to a, to a grim future. So it's really two aspects of ourselves that are in conflict in this film. I think that's about all the questions we have time for from the floor. But Good questions, guys. Thanks. Jim, I, I do have another question for you about, you know, one of the things that you do as a filmmaker is you want to share with your movie, and today was an opportunity to share with your movie. What, what is the next opportunity uh, that people are going to have to uh, get a little piece of that time? Well, you know, people have been sort of flagging us in the blogosphere for holding back on trailers and stuff like that. So, you know, I wanted I wanted to do something that was really special on unveiling the film. I think we've managed to do that today. Yeah. Woo. So, it kind of occurred to me that you know, there's a global audience out there. What if there was a way to capture this kind of magic for people that couldn't get to Comic Con? And so. We have kind of a big announcement here today, which is we're going to do something really unprecedented. It's a little bit of a, of a kind of social marketing experiment, if you will. Uh, we're going to take over uh, as many uh, uh, IMAX 3D uh, 
uh, digital and film IMAX theaters uh, plus selected 3D theaters worldwide on August 21st as we get our hands on. And we're going to let uh, a global audience, uh, international audience, come to see 15 minutes of Avatar for free on August 21st. Woo! Wow. Yeah. Introducing the, uh, the video game trailers from Ubisoft. We're going to be introducing more of the toy line from Mattel. Uh, so keep keep mark on your calendars August 24th, first August 21st as Avatar Day. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you.